Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. My name's Katie and I upload book related videos every single Wednesday and today I am very excited to review a super fun thriller and of course this will be spoiler free as always. And I will point out that some of you guys might be saying, isn't the title of this video kind of a spoiler for the book? No, you find out that the protagonist's husband is a serial killer within probably the first five pages. And before I get into the review, I did want to just give a little bit of a warning up front that if you are thinking about checking out this book, it has a lot of murder. It's just overall incredibly gory and there's a lot of talk of just terrible things happening to bodies. So you know, like I said 30 seconds ago, really fun. No, but joking aside, this is one of the more violent books that I've read in a while, so just a warning in case you're thinking about checking it out. So for a quick spoiler-free summary, right when the book kicks off, Gina Royal and her son and daughter, she's a stay-at-home mom driving them both home, and she's surprised to find that when she gets to her house, there are police cars everywhere, and, and she quickly finds out that someone crashed into their home, and because of that person crashing into their home, pol police and everybody were able to find out that inside of their garage was essentially her husband's serial killer lair with bodies to match. Then fast forward five years, her husband is in jail and she has changed her name to Gwen. She's had all of her children change their names. They're moving constantly throughout the U.S. because although she was acquitted, everybody obviously assumes that she must have known and she must have been involved. So there are basically tons of internet trolls constantly talking about wanting to murder her and her children as payback. The families of some of the women who were murdered obviously want bad things to happen to her and her kids. Gwen and her children have just settled in this rural small town in Tennessee with a house on Stillhouse Lake and once they move there they start to feel pretty settled and then not surprisingly some scary things start to happen. So getting into pros and then cons, my biggest pro of this book is that it really makes you realistically think that if you were in Gwen slash Gina's situation it's very realistic for how this would actually impact you because you would think if a family member was found to do something like this. If you had no idea that it was happening, you'd think, okay, well, they're a psychopath, but I'm going to be okay. But it really makes you think about how the media and everybody else would react to you. It kind of reminded me a lot of the Amanda Knox documentary on Netflix, if you guys have seen that, but and how the media kind of created this story around Amanda that she was just this crazy slut serial killer. And the types of things I saw people saying about Amanda Knox or what people are kind of saying about Gwen slash Gina. It's also interesting how she points out that it's gives kind of misogynist an excuse to just go fucking ham on a woman because apparently she's done something wrong so it just gives them an excuse to say they want to murder her and her children and have that be perfectly okay. I, I will also say I'm just kind of a sucker for this storyline or trope of not necessarily finding out your loved one is a serial killer but the storyline or trope that you find out that the person you're married to is not who they seem. Because although I'm sure what happens in this book is not going to happen obviously to any of us, when you think about it no matter who your loved ones are to a certain extent you can never know them as well as you know yourself and this book really explores that and it's just horrifying. The author just also does a really good job of putting you in Gwen's shoes and making her feel as paranoid and on edge as she constantly is. I also just adored Gwen and I could only dream to be as badass as she was. And although she was amazing, it was the perfect balance of her being badass but also reeling and being paranoid and constantly terrified about all the things that have happened to her, things that might happen to her family, and these horrible things that her husband did to these women. I also was very happy to find that the children were not irritating in the slightest. I thought they actually handled everything as well as they could have, much better than I would have handled the situation if I were. 10 years old. My only main critique of this book is there's a character who is a cop and this isn't a spoiler because there are tons of cops throughout the book but there's one cop who's supposed to be like a good cop who's very smart and they do something towards the end of the book that is just so fucking stupid that it just took me completely out of the book because there's no way like a good smart cop w would do what the character does and it just made me think okay well the author made the cop do that just so this other thing could happen. For cons I also thought the beginning and end of the book were incredibly exciting but the middle did have some slow patches but overall this was just one of the most entertaining thrillers that I've read in a really long time. I, I know that just my last book review 
two is me calling Bonfire the book very entertaining, but this I thought was even more entertaining than that. Even though it is, as I said, very gory and violent, it's just so entertaining. And, and this book really is gonna make me think from now on. You know, say for example, when I'm reading about the John Bonet Ramsey murder case, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, Bert definitely did it. It's gonna make me second guess myself and make me think, okay, well maybe I just think that because that's how the media has presented all of the evidence. So, so overall, I would highly recommend checking out Still House Lake if you're in the mood for a terrifying, very fun, fast-paced thriller. Also, apparently there is a sequel. I'm not sure if it's out yet or not. Please go ahead and read Still House Lake so that when I review the sequel, you're not being spoiled about this book, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.